the cholesterol found in foam cells cannot lead to the crystalline deposits seen in atherosclerosis. Rather, the cholesterol found in atherosclerosis comes from red blood cells. You see, their outer membrane contains more cholesterol than any other cell in the body. And this paper not only describes the central accumulation of red blood cell membranes within atherosclerotic plaques, it also details how by injecting red blood cells into animals, investigators were able to produce atherosclerotic plaques that contain both cholesterol crystals and LDL-laden foam cells. So thrombi, or clots, can elegantly explain the constituents of atherosclerotic plaques, all of them. So I'd like to now take a closer look at the so-called cholesterol crystals themselves. So understand, on this slide here, you're not looking at crystals directly. You're looking at the spaces where they used to be before they were dissolved in processing. That means that another component could form the crystals. So anything with a near identical structure would lead to the exact same appearance. Enter phytosterols, plant versions of cholesterol, and these are almost identical to cholesterol. And these too form crystals, crystals which are difficult to differentiate from cholesterol crystals. And phytosterols can be easily delivered by red blood cells, given that they can actually be incorporated into the membrane of red blood cells and cells in the same way that cholesterol is carried in the red blood cell membrane. And while the foam cells don't release cholesterol in a crystal form, as we've discussed, foam cells are only too happy to expel the phytosterols when they can. At this stage, it's probably not going to surprise you that phytosterols, too, are readily detected in atherosclerotic plaques. This is a case report of a 33-year-old male with premature, severe atherosclerosis. And predictably, when researchers performed a biopsy of his aorta, they found plant sterols. Fortunately for most of us, our bodies reject most of the plant sterols that we consume, with only about 1% being absorbed and assimilated into our tissues. Some people, however, are unlucky enough to absorb much larger amounts of these plant sterols, between 15 and 60%. And this condition is called cytosterolemia. And the consequences can be dire, there being one case of a five-year-old dying from sudden cardiac death. Despite this, these phytosterols are often lauded for their ability to reduce cholesterol levels, which is why products such as this containing plant sterols are actually promoted, perversely promoted, for cardiovascular health. Despite there being approximately zero evidence of cardiovascular benefit and significant evidence of harm. And this, I believe, is where seed and vegetable oils need to come into the conversation, both of which contain significant amounts of plant sterols, even olive oil. And it's the plant sterol content of these oils which underpins their cholesterol-lowering effects. 